Hello, welcome to How to Teach Your Child Maths. Today we're just going to be covering how to use the maths resource Numicon. So we're going to cover what is it, how do we use it, and how can you use it at home. So Numicon is based around the following approach, concrete, pictorial, and abstract. So as you can hear, we've got concrete, which is physical objects. Pictorial is by drawing pictures to represent those concrete objects. And then abstract is where we use a number sentence to represent the pictorial and the concrete principle. So this approach encourages the children to first explore maths using the apparatus in order to, bet in order to better understand and explain the mathematical concepts. So this is what Numicon actually looks like. So we have a shape that represents each number and the holes within the shape represent also the number of the given piece of Numicon. So, for example, a number three piece here is in this shape and it is yellow and it has three holes to represent three. Now, as you can see, the majority of the odd ones normally have that extra bit poking at the top where it is an odd number and not an even number. This is a helpful tip to help the children to pick out the number that they're looking for. The Numicon pieces will also be the same colour all the time. Um, sometimes you might find um, copies of the resource online um, where they've had to tweak it for copyright reasons. Um, but it's best to try and find an example that matches the Numicon that we use in school because sometimes the children look for the number that they're looking for based off of the colour that they know it is. So the children first learn to recognise the number frames, which is the shapes that you can see here. And this helps to support the learners and helps to understand. This helps support the learners understanding of place value. So once they've understood the basic principle of place value with their Numicon, they move on to combining the Numicon to build numbers bigger than 10. So as you can see from the previous slide, we don't have a zero Numicon because we can't represent that, but our Numicon, our basic Numicon goes from one all the way up to 10. So to make numbers larger than 10, we then have to think about the place value system and we talk about tens and ones. So obviously here in the number 17, we've got one lot of 10 and seven ones. And if you look at the Numicon picture, we represent that, represent that with the same idea. We have one lot of 10 and we have a seven piece rather than seven one pieces. Um, it just is a lot quicker and easier to build the number that way. So the number 17 is represented with one 10 and a seven piece, whereas the number 27 is represented with two 10 pieces and a seven piece. And then finally, the number 34 is represented with three tens and a four piece. And a four piece. So the Numicon is normally a concrete object but we can turn it into a pictorial representation for the children which they very often do in school so as you can see here the number 17 that we had on the previous slide here has been drawn using numicon shapes so we ask the children to use the squares in their books to draw the numicon so they know that they need rows of two and that they need 10 circles all together and then they neatly draw around that to represent the 10 piece and then it's again, again the same for the seven so whilst we don't just want the children to draw 10 circles in a random shape we encourage them to draw them in the same shape of the numicon because then it all flows nicely and it avoids creating misconceptions and confusing the children we refer to these drawings as a type of jotting So Numicon can also be used to support addition and subtraction, both practically and pictorially through objects. So it's a little bit more easier to show it practically with addition. Um, so what we would do is we would get the concrete pieces like we have shown previously, um, and then we would add on the number that we would like to. So for example, you can see this has been turned into a pictorial representation. We've got a five piece of Numicon here and a six piece of Numicon here. And if the children have those have those pieces of Numicon physically in front of them, they would push those pieces together to represent the adding. And then they would count up all of the holes to find out what the total of five add six equals to. And in this case, it equals 11. So for subtraction, we are less likely to get 
for practical pieces of pneumocon out because we can't snap pieces off of the pneumocon. So what we tend to encourage them to do is we can we encourage them to go and get the practical piece of pneumocon if they're not sure how to draw it or what it looks like. However, for the actual subtraction of the numbers, we get them to draw out their starter number, their largest number. So if we look at this example here, we've got nine take away four equals five. We've drawn out the nine piece to begin with and we're taking away five. So we're going to, uh, sorry, we're taking away four. So we're going to cross out four of the dots, that, uh, four of the holes on our pneumocon piece. And then we've got five remaining. So we know that that is what's left once four is taken away. And again, this can be done with larger numbers. They just have to build the, the biggest number first by using their knowledge of tens and ones, and then they can take away the given number to find the total at the end, the new total. So how can you use Numicon at home? So we have got a printable Numicon home resource that's located on Teams under the file section on the Maths channel. Um, so once you've got that, you don't need to print off many copies. Um, but when you've got your copies, if you cut them out, um, these are the following activities that would be helpful to do at home with your children. So you can practice recognising the numbers and matching them to their written form. So, for example, if you're, you could say to your child, can you find me the four piece? And then they could write that down or you might play a game where you write the, the digit and then they've got to match the digit to the numicon piece. You can build numbers within 100, so you can give them any number between 0 and 100, depending on their ability, and you can ask them to make it, so it gets the children to apply their tens and ones knowledge. We have covered this in school, however, this might need a recap. You can add numbers, as we've talked in the previous slide, as well as subtracting numbers, as we have in the previous side slide. We can look at number bonds to 10 and then within 20 using the pneumocon. Again, it's a similar strategy to add in because number bonds are just the two numbers added together to equal 10 or 20. And then finally, as we've shown in this um, PowerPoint, that you can use pneumocon as jottings, as pictorial images, like so in the previous slides. So that's Numicon in a bit of a nutshell. Um, if you have got any more questions, please contact your child's teacher. We would all be more than happy to answer any questions that you have on Numicon. Thank you for listening.